Here and now, here we are. Where are we now? Are we in a revolutionary or pre-revolutionary period? It's We're looking something. like that. We're something, that's for sure. Wow. This is uh, unprecedented. It's not like any other revolutionary upsurge. It's gone beyond even Black Lives Matter. Oh, yeah, way beyond. Way, way beyond. beyond, because this is international. This is, you know, worldwide revolutionary movement against... What is it focused on? It's against colonialism. It's against settler colonialism. It's against imperialism. It's against yeah. the United States hegemony. It's yes. against the European hegemony. It's yes. against the Western complicity with genocide of a, yes. a third world or fourth world people. Uh, and... Yes, yeah. It's also oh. turning into a youth revolution, yes. a student revolution, a, and young, young Jewish people, you know, like a majority are opposed to this genocide, even. This is a yeah. youth rebellion, a international youth rebellion against Western hegemony at the same yeah. time that they're losing the war in Ukraine. At the same time that China is outpacing the growth of the United States of America. But, but United States military hegemony is still dominant. Sure is. And that's, yeah. and that's, that's one. And also, um, to a certain extent, um, they used the UN security, the UN as security council as their, as their, um, uh, bully pulpit, you know, whenever they can. Yeah. Or, or as, as as a stage for their for their prima donna uh, um, shredding of the UN ch ch charter, the, yeah. The, the, yeah, 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 yeah. The Zionist ambassador he shredded the UN charter in front of the whole United Nations General Assembly. I mean, that's well, an act of uh, in court. It's called uh, contempt of court. That's contempt of. The foundations of the United Nations Charter. So you know, they he, should have been, he should have been expelled. That guy, that that so-called ambassador, he yeah, himself, just, such a such a fool, you know, such a com I mean, comic, yeah, you, you know, know, like a oh. let somebody from a from a a non-nuclear power third world country do that, and they probably will be expelled. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I okay, mean, so. Yeah. Palestine now has augmented status, but only as an observer state. It doesn't have a vote yet. Okay, okay. that's good. This is this is good. This is uh, you know, who thought this would have been possible? You know, just a little while ago. You know, this, this is a result of the Hamas offensive on October the seventh. This is the result of October seventh. Uh, exactly. Uh, and, and yeah. This illustrates, you know, that resistance is the only way to get your liberation. Yes. I mean, you know, pleading, you know, like with logic and saying, you know, like, oh, yes, you know, we should be a member state, you know, in full, full uh, uh, force, you know, like because we say so, it's not good enough, you know, just because an oppressed nation says that they are an oppressed nation and that they want to have their liberation, does that get them their liberation? No. No, no, no. no. You, you, have, you have to move the needle yourself. And be willing to accept the consequences of moving that needle. Hmm. And the consequences for October 7 have been basically a genocide, hmm. a holocaust, mass murder, defamation, collect I mean collective punishment by your oppressor. Hmm. So everyone in the world can see it now. There's no one in the world who who who, if they want to see, cannot see what Israel is about, and that's not an anti-Zion. That's not a a, a um, um, anti-Semitic statement. It's just yeah. it happens to be a religious state based on its claim of speaking for the Jewish people, which it which it does not. Mm. And so, yeah, you're right. If it were not yeah. for October seven, yeah. that would not have happened. You're exactly right. 
yeah, yeah. And what happened October the 7th? It was a battle that the Zionist military, the vaunted Zionist military lost. Lost, yes. On that day, within one hour, they wiped out the Gaza Brigade, 256 soldiers who were there, you know, to confine the Palestinians into that ghetto, removed, totally removed. So much so that, you know, there was even, you know, civilian looters, you know, who flooded across the border through the fence in order to get what they could. They even took some hostages. But even those hostages weren't raped. You know, like this whole rape story thing, you know, like, first of all, it's counter to Islam and Hamas is Islamic, right? You know, like, so, you know, like, from the very true, very true, very true. First premises, you know, like they wouldn't be, you know, into doing mass rapes, you know, as, as alleged. No, this is not permitted by Islam as well as Judaism. But, uh, you know, uh, they wouldn't have been into doing, you know, mass rapes. Their strategy was to take mass hostages. And there was, uh, you know, 250, uh, 253, I think, hostages taken as a whole. Now, I've got the numbers here written down, you know, because it's starting to get complicated. So it's 1,154 hostages that were taken. Uh, of those, 1,139 were Israelis. The others were Thailand uh, guest workers. And I guess, you know, the Thailand, you know, uh, guest workers are not going to be coming back. And uh, a lot of them have been released, you know, just out of, you know, for free, you know, not even in exchange, you know, during the seven-day truce for um, the, uh, the Palestinian hostages that are confined in Zionist prisons. No. Okay. Of the 1,139, 256 were soldiers, gas the brigade. Okay. Then, you know, the uh, border police were activated. Uh, October the 7th, after a couple of hours, you know, they went to the Nova Festival and they were wiped out. Border police, 53. Oh, and they're vicious people. I tell you, I've, I've run into them. They're otherwise called the Green Berets. Okay. Now, there were also security guards at the Nova Festival. 63 of them, according to the uh, version that I heard, were security guards. Okay, so that leaves 782 civilians. Now, how many of those 782 civilians were killed by Israel and how many were killed by Hamas? We have to investigate this. Now, some information that we have, according to Al Jazeera, for instance, is that 70 vehicles were, were bombed by the Apache helicopters with, uh, with the Hellfire missiles, okay? 70 vehicles that were either trying to get into Gaza with hostages or trying to flee somewhere with Israelis in them. Okay, let's say that there's, you know, four uh, passengers in each of the vehicles right, right. That, okay. were, that were you know, burned to a crisp by the missiles from the Apache helicopters. That makes 280. So go down to about 600, you know, civilians who were killed that day. Uh, and some of them were killed by Hamas, even though they were civilians, even though they were unarmed, you know, which is uh, not uh, appropriate. But nonetheless, you know, like there's videos uh, showing, you know, Hamas fighters shooting into the crowd at the, uh, at the Ray of Nova Festival, uh, which is a uh, totally useless thing to do and uh, totally sort of short-sighted in terms of uh, trying to convince the Israelis that... Uh, they have no other choice but to negotiate with Hamas. So this, uh, you know, uh, is uh, a fault in and of itself. But unless, you know, like compared to the number of civilians that Israel has been killing, it doesn't compare at all. Oh, so, no, I, I, th I think that um, what this shows, these numbers show, well, let, let me back up a minute. I'm going to be curious next October 7th if there are celebrations among the Palestinian people who are in, within within the, the diaspora and within, if if there are any Palestinians in Gaza, we don't know what's going to happen with Gaza. But I'm going to be curious about celebrations over the over history about the uh, the October seven event. I'm just I'm just putting it out there. 
because if this caused the Israelis to show their hands in the world, and this caused this this event in the UN to take place, then I would think, at least among some circles, there 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 will be celebrations, perhaps not perhaps not public, but I don't see how it should not be celebrated by by those carrying out the war, by those carrying out the acts of national liberation. I think it has to be. That's just my opinion. Right now, the, the number of Palestinians who are killed on a daily basis has declined, actually. I think they're running out of targets. The reason, even using targets, you know, that they determined from... Um, from uh, conversations on WhatsApp, and they were hunting yeah. down, you know, any Palestinian, you know, who expressed uh, any form of solidarity, you know, with the uh, uprising. So, I mean, you know, that's considered to be a thought crime, isn't it? Well, the 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 uh, the parallel to Israeli, the uh, the Ukrainians have done the same thing. There was a, a an elderly woman, I think she was eighty two, um, from. Um, Transnistria. She lived in Ukraine, and she's alleged to have sent someone a, 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 an email or a message, which so support for World War, the great, the great patriotic war, mm. and um, they jailed. And, and and I think for the special military operation, mm. I saw it recently, and she they they jailed her for five years. She she she's probably going to die in prison. Uh -huh. You know, so that's wow. you know, yeah, it's the same, same, the same kind of thing. And I hope, I, and I hope we have learned, or we will learn about the um, myth of, of WhatsApp being a secure platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, can't trust WhatsApp anymore. Yeah, yeah, we. I think that's that's been shown in this particular war of aggression of Israel against the Palestinian people. And against the Palestinian resistance, that WhatsApp is not a secure platform. Period. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. It. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Also, the uh, the platform that uh, chat tab platform that that the journalists were using in Palestine at the time that I was there, called Signal. I read that that also was uh, hacked, and it's not secured. That's only... well, I think it's good we know that because the, that was. I've, I heard this week you know, another program that I was involved in that the activists in UCLA and some of the encampment are using signal to to uh, encrypt their communications. Um, so it's, 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 it's good that it's good that we know this now about yeah, signal. No. As well. Signal signal is uh, I think was hacked by the Pegasus program that the, um, the really... military was using. Okay, so uh, yeah. I think the only secure. Uh, platform right now is wire yeah it's a difficult program to operate you. sometimes you know but i think that's because it's uh it's fully encrypted and uh, Actually, be we need to encourage our people both young and not so young to continue to study computer science and mm -hmm. app development and work on encryption yeah i yeah. think we should encourage that we should encourage that um, as well as the other, the other things we can encourage, that I'm not going to talk about in, in this program, but I think signal I mean, the, the development of of high security apps for for private communication is is essential. We have to have it. Yeah, you know we've got to have specialists, you know, in uh, internet communications, IT specialists. Yes, exactly. Because that Especially. is our avenue, yes. you know, to to yes. really organize, you know, which yes. has never been available before, you know, before, you know, like. I have to count I mean, a uh, letter to the paper, you know, like to get some opinion, you know, into the public mind. No. Uh, or or um, how do we develop our own um, our own telegram, the network? Hmm. How do we develop our own telegram? Let me just 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 something to think about because we're saying that's internet communication specialists, and right now the, tel the telegram channels are essentially the alternative source of information around the world. Yeah. And they are in many ways, depending on 
the content of the channel are considered as legitimate, if not more legitimate than than the mainstream. They, they have a they have a legitimacy of of their own. That's mm -hmm. all. That's all. Yes, and, you know the internet, you know news uh, communications, especially the direct transmissions from Gaza. That's what's you know like opening up this uprising. You know yes. that's what's you know motivating people. That's what's giving people the reason to be out there in the first place. You know because they yes. know what's going on. They right. know that it's being censored elsewhere. Right. And for those reasons, you know, together, you know, they know they have to get out there and do something about it. Right. Right. And what's what what I found what I found good about it, uh, Abraham, is that the resistance forces have been communicating, giving thanks and giving uh, ideas to what kind of nonviolent resistance could occur around the world to show, to show solidarity with Palestine. Mm. They have been giving props to the students through through their through different media channels, through, through, through the internet and through Telegram, and giving ideas to students and supporters what, what kind of campaigns would, would be helpful. So it's a way of actually closing the gap between the underground or, or the resistance forces and, and those who are engaged in open legal work. I think it's fantastic. Yes, it's developing international communication. I mean, you know, all of these protests, you know, they're in contact with each other now, surely. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, so, yeah. wow, you know, that's an incredible power. You know, they can just decide, you know, what to do and when, you know, yeah, like, well. right. they've got the power to do that now. Okay. Now, how far this can go? Okay. The student movement is, is a student movement. You know, they're, they're there on a temporary basis. You know, it's difficult, you know, to build up a movement uh, that has long-term consequences to it, you know. So, okay, what else can we look forward to? Look what happened to Dr. Jill Stein, brutalized by the police, charged with uh, assaulting police, and she's a candidate, you know, registered in a number of states for the presidency in the upcoming uh, U.S. election. Not right. that this is, you know, like uh, anything of importance, you know, because, you know, the U.S. is going to continue as it is, you know, in spite of anything that the people have to say. But nonetheless, you know, if she can get, you know, 2%, 3%, 4% of the vote, and that's the difference you know, between the two major candidates, then it show, throws the whole system into, into question. You know, because then how can you determine who the president is if no candidate has a majority? And it's supposed to be, you know, based upon a well, majority, I, you know, rule system, isn't it? No, no it's, it's actually majority rig, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but the point, I think your point is well taken, and I think we're going to have to we're going to have to kick that around a little bit because I don't at least I'm not part of you know high level or low level electoral discussions, but no one I know is even thinking like that. Mm. What you just said, no one I know is even thinking along those lines that if those millions of students, not just said millions, yeah. who have been demonstrated in the United States, who are registered to vote. Mm. If part of the if a tactical move could be made in the elections where it, we they were intervene in this way, not just not voting for Biden, but voting for somebody else, that mm. would make a shift. Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter if it's a vote for Jill Stein or Dr. Cornell West, you know, I'm as long saying, as yeah, they're voting for somebody else, you know, that means right. they're taking the votes away right. from some candidate right. who's hoping to get a majority. Right. right. And this is what this might be something that could show the student protest movement having an impact on the electoral outcome of the country. Yes. Not just by not voting, by voting in another way. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I think we we have, we have to. I think this is something that we're going to have to take up in our networks, and it's about time now to start talking about it because it's May. School in most of these schools in May have, are may have already shut down, but mm -hmm. the school will start back up in 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 August and September, mm -hmm. and it's like the, if the kind of get some momentum about momentum around how will this student protest pro Palestinian movement impact? How can it impact the elections? Yeah. Or yeah. or why 
why shouldn't it impact the elections? Yeah. Not just by not voting for Biden, but by voting for somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and and uh, for students to go out, you know, and vote in that manner doesn't mean that they're voting in favor of the system. It doesn't mean that they support, you know, the outcome of the election. It doesn't mean that they respect, you know, whatever, you know, the of the major candidates, you know, is going to win and say, oh, yes, okay, that's our president because, you know, majority of the people, you know, said so. No, it doesn't mean that at all. One, they're not going to get a majority. Two, you know, even if they do, we know why, you know, because they've gotten the money, you know, to buy the election. So that doesn't mean anything to us anyway. So, you know, like this puts into question the whole, the whole nature of the election itself. Yes, and then, exactly. And if an election is not going to solve the problem, then how do you solve the problem? Then you have to start talking about something else, an alternative political system, beginning with a constituent assembly, like was done in the American Revolution. That's how the American Revolution was started. You know, they got together and they decided that they were a body, a political body that can decide for itself. And what they decide is the Charter of Rights, or whatever you call it in the United States, the Bill of Rights, you know. And then that, you know, document, revolutionary document, became a constitution and it worked, you know? So it can happen again. If it happened once, it can happen again. Well, I think that, you know, I I'm, I think that idea needs to be, need, we, need to, we need to share this idea because I've, I've been saying to myself and with a few, a few others, okay, what are we gonna do now as summer comes in, if the campus is closed, what is what is going to sustain and maintain the organizational focus and coherence or build some coherence among the different campuses across the country and also around the world just we need we need to put some ideas out here or here and hear what students are saying what our students say need to be done mm. because I, I want to know what is that 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 group of, of those group of activists are saying I mean, we we need we need those on the campus and those off the campus need to be talking to each other. In, mm. in, in other words, we mm. we can't be separate because yeah. I mean we it's, it, we we shouldn't have a separate thing. So yeah. wherever we wherever we can make that happen to our viewers and listeners, mm. we encourage you to step up to yeah. reach out and discuss these ideas with with those who are on the campuses to go to go visit the encampments during during the daytime. To have them come to your communities and speak, have speak outs in teachings within the, the the communities, within the churches, within the synagogues, within the parks, within the within the bowling alleys, within yeah. the within the motorcycle clubs, yeah. within you know wherever we can have speak outs about about the war that the United States is backing, that Israel is waging, and how we can maintain and develop our movement mm -hmm. to. to Achieve not 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 only liberation for Palestine, but an end an end to the system we have here, we, uh, you know, which is, you know, which is backing it. I think those are good ideas yeah. for us to circulate among our allies and friends. Yes, yes, and in particular, the Jewish students—they're not just a collection of individuals. There, you know, when the slogan, you know, first came up, uh, not in our name. It was right. first expressed as not in my name, you know, right. as if an individual Jew, you know, was standing up and saying, you know, like, uh, I'm not going along with the Zionists, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Jewish, you know, but I'm better than the Zionists. Okay, you know, fine, you know, like, if you want to, you know, get into, you know, self-promotion. But, you know, I proposed at the time, uh, you know, that it should be changed, you know, to not in our name, you know, because we're taking on the role of speaking on behalf of the Jewish people now. And all the Jewish students, you know, have to become conscious of that. And they're not yet. They don't realize, you know, how big of a revolution they're making. They think that they're just out there, you know, like for their own sake, you know, for their own self-consciousness. It's not just that. They are an expression of a revolt of Jewish youth against the Zionist establishment. And they have got to realize, you know, that their task is so much bigger than they assumed. You know, they're not just, you know, a student standing next to another student. They are a Jewish student standing up against the whole Zionist party system, the whole Zionist state, which exists not only in Palestine, but the Zionist state exists, you know, in the Jewish communities throughout the world. 
where the Zionist, you know, bourgeoisie has taken over control of the communal civil administration of the Jewish communities because they have the money and use that money, you know, uh, to set up an organization like in Canada called the uh, Committee for Israel and Jewish Affairs or the Combined Jewish Appeal. And there's never any elections to those bodies. No way. And the Canadian Jewish Congress, you know, which does have elections and has an open membership to all Jewish people, it's disappeared. It's gone. You know? Wow. Wow. In the U.S., you know, you still they still have the, you know, American Jewish Congress, and they should go inside there and take it over because they've got the numbers now. Yes, they, yes, yes. Yes, the, the numbers are there, and we've 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 said this a number of times on this program, but I don't think that message is getting out, or or or, or if it's getting out, it's getting out, um, and it's not is not being is not being concretized and systematized and discussed. Mm. So you mentioned a number another a number of, of interventions you have suggested that especially the college youth. Who are Jewish take up with the American Jewish Council, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. and uh, and Jewish Voices for Peace should be could could become a a powerful entity, a powerful vector for change entering these congresses and seeing what impact they can have. Yeah. If, if if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Yeah. But to not to not try it. That I mean, yeah. Then it makes me think that at the time of the Black Lives Matter movement upsurge, such a strategy entering the NAACP, for example, might have been a, po a positive move for Black Lives Matter. It just so that sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to enter these these bodies, you know, with a purpose and see what 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 you could do to build unity, to struggle out struggle out ideas and also to uh, move forward anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you know, these bodies, you know, like the NAACP, you know, like exists only, you know, to to uh, influence uh, uh, certain pieces of legislation to get right. certain sort of, you know, like uh, privileges for a certain sector of the Black nation's population, right. housing, you know, health care or whatever, you know, uh, like uh, Bernie Sanders has gotten some sort of, you know, health care privileges, you know, like um, installed. You know, he sold out, you know, for the sake of of getting that, you know, piece of legislation through. And that was it, you know. That's what his whole life is all about now. You know, that's his legacy. And it's too limited, you know, because we have the numbers now to have a much greater impact. And we've got to take it. We've got to take the power because we can. And now is the time. Now is the time, you're right. Yeah. Now is the time for these ideas to be to be taken up and struggle with and and to intervene within these broader these broader movements. Yeah. 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 And, and and the fight for social revolution. Yeah. yeah. And it's a social revolution that we're making, not just a political revolution. This is That's not, social. you know, like some simple transition right. <laughs> of power from one group to another group. No. This is a social revolution in which the whole of the society is liberating itself away from the state. So you, know, you can't let people. I, I, you know, I. We need to get some some media clips here on here. About three weeks ago, some bodies or bodies from major corporations said, "We're gonna make sure none of these students ever get a job. They're mm -hmm. never gonna get a job. That's a threat. Mm -hmm. They need to be shut down. You can't threaten. You can't threaten my livelihood. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. You say I can't. I can't engage. I can't engage in protests you don't approve of." Mm -hmm. And, 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 and you, who are you? You want the Congress? You're somebody with money who, who hires people. I mean, stuff like that. Just, just mm -hmm. things like that. You have to, you have, we have to, we have to say no. It's, no, that's not, it's not. But the way that the media, as a mouthpiece for the system, has, they have essentially, at least in large measure, um, neutered the voice of. The protest movement. Mm. Who? I mean, back in the day, you heard Abby Hoffman, Jerry Jerry Rubin, Bobby Seale. You had people's names you could use, right? Right? Mm. Right? You, 
Yeah. Right? Name, right? Even, mm-hmm. even Rachel Corey. Someone's name you could leave, has name you, you, you could latch on to as an example of what your movement was about. Mm-hmm. The student movement has not even been allowed, has not been allowed by the media to even have a name. Mm-hmm. Except yeah. to be anti-Semitic. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah. Yeah, in the sixties they broke into the mass media. Yeah, we haven't yeah. been allowed, you know, to even right. have a voice in the mass media right. at this point. Exactly right. But, it, but the me but the mass media cannot ignore that the student protests are occurring. Yeah. They can't ignore it, but the, the, the student protests are not allowed. A student protest and the pro Palestinian movement is not allowed to even have a spokesperson, a yeah. name. Who is supposed to tell me? One name and, we know. No one. There's no name of uh, anyone. Yeah. The anti-Semites. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah well. <laughs> and even, you know, like when they when they do interview, you know, students, and very oftentimes, you know, they're Jewish students, they don't even, you know, say that they're Jewish students. You know, the, the interviewer has to say, you know, and what do you have as a reason in particular for yourself, you know, to come out and protest? Then finally, you know, they come out and say, well, I'm Jewish. Yeah. You know, they it's like an admission instead of an assertion. It's like, uh, you know, like they're afraid, you know, to say that they're Jewish or something like that. When in fact they should be saying, you know, we're Jewish and we're speaking on behalf of the Jewish people, you know, and the Zionists can, you know, get lost because they don't represent anybody, you know, but money. You know, they could say that, but they don't. It would be powerful. We gotta have to, we got to find a way that you can link with some of these students because I, I I don't know the I don't know that they have even heard heard of your message. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, as an example of what should be done, you know, in conclusion, you know, like I have, I have the qualifications, you know, to be a university professor. I was a, a university course director at York University in Toronto between uh, seventy seven and nineteen eighty. I have the experience as well. But since I worked, you know, at the Palestine Embassy during the Israel Zionist war invasion, you know, of Lebanon, 1982 to 1985, when the Sabra Shatila refugee camps were massacred as Gaza is being massacred now, I was never, ever, you know, allowed, you know, to teach again. You know, as an individual, I have no recourse. You know, I, I, there's no way in which I can fight back. You know, I have been isolated. The only way I can speak out, you know, and break through the censorship is to go down there, you know, to the Jewish community campus, stand there with a big banner, you know, six by 10, and, and say that I'm against the occupation. And everybody comes and talks to me then, you know. Otherwise, there's no way, no way that I can get and speak to the Jewish community. So, you know, this is what we have to break through. And, uh, and, then, and then we could win. We could win this. You know, even in the Jewish people, we could win this despite the Israelis who are brainwashed. And then they would have to listen to us. I think yeah. there's a way by using the internet communications. I think I think we have, we're gonna to have to tap into our thinking a little bit more and figure out, figure out how we can do this. Because the fact that these that the internet exists and people from who are active are on the internet, we have to, we have to find a way to intervene in their in their areas of con- of um, of congregation, so that so you can be heard. Yeah, we have, to, so we have to find a way. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a difference between you know strategic and a tactical approach. Right now, you know, like the student movement is into tactics. You know, like right. encampments. You know, and and speak outs. You know, and and uh, using a microphone. You know, to to say that which has not been said that is censored elsewhere. Okay, tactics, but strategy. It's only strategy. Then that can actually defeat power because power is entrenched. Power has its whole mechanisms, you know, like set up, ready to go, you know, and we've got to find a way, you know, a strategy, you know, to defeat that. So that's what we're here for. And uh, it's great to speak with you about this, Steve, you know, because this is not discussed anywhere else. And this is why our uh, here and now sessions are so important to, for other people, you know, to hear and to share. To share is the most important thing. You know, because right. that's an action in and of itself. Because if you're sharing a strategic, you know, critique of the movement so that we develop, you know, a means to achieve revolutionary victory, then, you know, this is where, where it's at. You know, that's where should, we should be going. Right. And I thank right. you very much, you know, for for working 
together with me and the Jewish Socialist Bund, you know, so that we can achieve this, because this is of how course. it begins. Of course, that's what the real that's what real solidarity looks like. Yeah. Great. Okay. Until next week, then. So next week, here and now.